Hello world, welcome back to another episode of Third Eye Sipes. Whoa. <clears throat> wow, I just like threw out my threw out my throat on that one. I threw out my throat. Have you ever thrown out your throat? I have. Wanna know? Oh, uh, look at see what the heck <laughs> Hold on. Let me drink some water. It is six in the morning. This is the first time I'm talking out loud. Come on, guys. Come on. Let's stop throwing out our throats. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, how are you? Hello. This is a this is a podcast. This is a podcast. Um. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to it. Um, for those of you who have uh, who have never listened to this podcast, it's a pretty weird one. Um, no, it's actually not that bad. Uh, we talk about spiritual stuff. Um, conspiracy theories, I guess. Uh. Yeah, esoteric knowledge, self improvement, law of attraction, uh, uh, other stuff, other stuff, guys, life stuff, life stuff that I think that you guys need to know, and always with a very neutral and uh, spiritual perspective. Do I give you a neutral perspective? I feel like my neutral perspective is very opinionated. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. I think my neutral perspective is an opinion i don't know i don't know i I was thinking about that i was like well i don't because i don't like yeah i guess so it's an opinion yeah i guess i guess you can think about that because look if you go for one that's like okay say there's two options right like oh i like this option better than option b then that's an opinion some people like option b better than option a that's an opinion some people don't like either a or b that is also an opinion. Okay, so I think, <laughs> so I think, I think neutrality is also an opinion. So, when I like to say I'm not a very opinionated person, I think that my neutral stance on things is very much an opinion. So maybe I am a very opinionated person. Who knows? This is what self reflection is, guys. This is what we do here. I I I interrogate myself until I I realize who I truly am. You should too. Uh, well, anyways, uh, welcome. Let's let's start off with doing a little uh, check in with ourselves. Um, have you been checking in with yourself? Do you do that often, or do you only wait until I tell you to check in with yourself? Ask yourself that. <laughs> um, maybe we should check in with ourselves every day. I I had mentioned previously that we should create like a a self check in list of everything that like to make sure we are doing everything that that we need to and that may that may be a little overwhelming for some you know i've been i've been exploring um you know mental health uh how do you call it activities not activities but like um just how to go about things a better way i get i guess i don't know i guess i i don't really know how to explain that what i mean is just different methods that we can take care of our mental health but more in a you know i've just been looking at like different options for you know people with like extreme extreme anxiety or extreme depression where like you know a lot of us i could be like you know create a self check-in list you know you you have to drink water you can um eat at least i don't know three times a day you don't really have to eat three times a day that's kind of like a myth um well it's not a myth but i mean it's not you don't have to there's so many things there's so many things that you really don't have to do like th- uh three meals a day eight hours of sleep it's recommended you get a minimum of eight hours of sleep i don't think that's true i mean i know that there's like a time wheel where like you feel most rested if you get like a certain amount of hours of sleep and then you feel least rested if you get a certain amount of hours of sleep but in yogic tradition well not yogic tradition because there's many different methods of yoga um are like different things that you can do but um a lot of yogis especially in ashrams they wake up at what like three something in the morning i think they start asana practice at four in the morning um and then they go to sleep at like 11 or 12 or something but it's very normal for them to only get like four hours of sleep three to four hours of sleep which is very interesting to me um because you know, there there might be something to it, of course. Anyways, what I was what I was even 
beginning to talk about was <laughs> it's like I'm like rambling. <laughs> um was yeah so like what may be easy for some um may not be easy for others like a lot of people just need to take take it day by day like do the bare minimum to get by um just to keep you know their mental peace which i completely understand and i wouldn't say that i never understood that before it's just i never really took it into consideration that you know some people may not be able to accomplish as much as the other person in one day um which is absolutely true and perfectly fine as well perfectly valid um so yeah anyways with the self check-in list uh i think water should be on there um there's an app on your phone actually i don't know what it's called i'm actually going to try to look it up right now um do 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 it's an app that you can it reminds you to drink water water drinking reminder that's just what i typed in um, yeah, there's a bunch of apps, actually, water, yeah, wa just type in water drinking reminder, and there's, like, so many apps now that I'm looking at it. Um, try to go for, like, the best rated and most downloaded, and then read the reviews, because I've actually, like, I was looking for an app, my, my boss, uh, she had an app for something, oh, it's, like, a scanner, like, a scanner with your phone, like, if you just take, like, put your phone over like the document or whatever it scans it and it looks exactly like if you were to scan it in a scanner machine um but then when i looked it up like she has an iphone and i have an android so then when i looked it up on my play store i was finding like some weird ones that look like like sketchy kind of and then the reviews were like don't do this it downloaded viruses on my phone like a lot of them are like scam apps so make sure you read the reviews um because they download and then like they kind of work but not really they're cheap but what they're really doing is uh exposing your phone to viruses and then like you have the government tracking you and stuff like me oh my god i had like a, an illuminati person follow me and i know a lot of those are fake but like this guy like there was like pictures of him like in illumin whatever the hell those were illuminati ceremonies i don't even i don't even know if that's real it, it looked like a church it was weird it was weird but he's he's following me and i didn't block him just because because, like, come on, they're gonna find me anyways. Like, if anybody, <laughs> if anybody's like, what, you're the Illuminati? Oh, okay. Like, you're advertising it on your Instagram, whatever. Um, I feel like they're watching me anyways, because I, I spit too much facts, guys. That's what, that's what this pod, podcast is. Me spitting too many facts, and then the Illuminati coming after me. <laughs> um, but anyways, water should be, <laughs> water should be on your, your check-in list. Um, eat veggies guys or some kind of raw raw vegetable or raw fruit i wouldn't i say more of the vegetables like greens like raw greens um try to get a salad in there cucumber is really good if you like snacking on cucumber just like eat pieces of cucumber don't try to use like ranch or anything those that that's kind of like an oil that covers over it and, and it won't really do anything what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to clean out your system all right guys we're supposed to have some some, some at least some greens in our preferably per meal that we eat um to help our digestive system because if we're not really having anything that stirs up our stomach that keeps that digestive tract moving um then you're gonna be all backed up and constipated and not only is that uncomfortable and of course you don't want to be constipated but it actually does something to your energetical body um and it's just it's not it's not ideal guys um let's let's get with that uh next so water let's try to put some greens or fruit at least maybe some like acidic fruit like pineapple um i'm just i'm not speaking from hell i'm not a doctor i'm not speaking from anything i've looked up i'm just speaking from personal experience um i've always had digestive problems or not digestive problems like stomach issues mostly because of digestive problems i guess but um cancers are actually prone to having stomach issues because the cancer uh zodiac sign the the planets that it rules or whatever however astrology works my roommate would know more than me um it rules the 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 stomach area the stomach organs um so yeah anyway so th that's what i'm prone to so I've, i i i know what works for me not what works for me may not work for you but you know it, it's worth a try right so i like to do stuff that kind of stirs up my stomach um to to get everything out you know what i mean um what else what else are you giving yourself time so look we have we have your body right water and food right 
So let's go to your mind. Let's go to your mind. Are you giving yourself space? Are you giving yourself the time to be with yourself? Are you giving yourself time for self-care? And now what I mean by self-care, you don't have to do a whole self-care routine where you do this and you do that. I mean, are you giving yourself some space or some time in your day um, to do something for yourself that you want to do and will take care of you? So this can be taking a long bath. This could be reading a book. This could be cooking yourself a nice meal. This could be going for a walk. Um doing some gardening this is anything that that is for you or for yourself that you personally want to do and it doesn't feel like you know you have to do it or um you know you're putting in too much effort that you really don't want to uh, i think these are self-care things personally also if you hear a humming oh <laughs> if you hear a humming in the background uh it's my heater because it's freaking cold here like sunny california um Especially in the morning, six in the morning. Um, it's getting, it's getting about, it's getting about that time, guys, where the frost nips, and we're almost a year. We're almost a year in this podcast, so <laughs> it was very interesting to think about. Uh, okay, so yeah, um, are you giving yourself that space? I think that's kind of mental um, meditation. Meditation, of course, that's gonna kind of bring us into the fourth one which is spiritual what are you doing for your spiritual health um a lot of people um well most of people who come to this podcast are on a, a journey of self-inquiry um self-realization and spirituality so that's that's why we that that's that's my main path that my whole life is spiritual everybody's life is spiritual but uh you know, this is what I tend to focus on probably every second of my day. Um, so that's what we talk about here. And, <clears throat> sorry, I was throwing out my throat again. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, spiritual wise, what are you doing for yourself? Are you meditating? Meditating Meditating is most like, it's, it's half and half, guys. It's like, it's very mental. It's very good for your mental health. This, they tell you this in psychology. Um, you learn about this in science class. You know, there's so many scientific studies of all the things it could do to your rewire your brain, um, calm down anxiety, even eradicate it, um, calm many, like, symptoms. So many scientific medical stuff, and yes, that's amazing. But spiritual-wise, what is the duty of spiritual? Well, it's cleansing your spiritual body. So we have many different bodies um not in the physical sense where you think where you're, you know there's just like like a clone jutsu where there's like a bunch of yous everywhere uh, it's like it's you and then you have your auric field right so it's kind of like this energy body around you and then yeah exactly that's what it is an energy body so you have that around you but then there's so many layers to that right so there's you know you have your etheric body you have your astral body um you have so many layers to you that um, permeate different dimensions, I guess you could say. Um, so it, what it does is, and all of these fields, is they hold stuff within them. So we have a mental body, right? I think I've posted a picture of this before. Um, we have a mental body that uh, trauma can stay within, even though, you know, you feel like you get over it, that trauma stays within your body. And that's why we have certain physical triggers or mental triggers, um, that, that arise because they're still held within your auric field. So meditating definitely clears that out. A lot of things clear that out too. Uh, sage, Palo Santo, Palo Santo, I feel like sage more than Palo Santo. Palo Santo more resets, even though I feel like I feel, a more energetic uh, reaction um, with Palo Santo than I do with Sage, which is very interesting. Um, but but what I hear is that Sage cleanses and Palo Santo resets. But I don't really know what resets mean. I mean, like, okay, if you just came back from a party and you're like, ugh, I would cleanse that energy. I mean, I would, <laughs> I would reset it. What, what am I resetting? Um, but that's only what I've heard. I'm not. I'm only reciting what I've heard. Um, but anyways, so sp I, let, let's just try to get on with this. <laughs> so spiritual wise, right? Are you meditating? Then it does a great deal. Um, spiritual wise you can even connect with spirit guides i've done a guided meditation where you meet with your spirit guide um 
I met with my spirit. This happened uh, maybe 2015. 2015, I did a guided meditation. Oh, five years ago. Five years ago, I did a guided meditation to meet my spirit guide. Um, and it was very, it was a very interesting experience. It wasn't even, it didn't look like a human. It looked like a, it looked like a very tall, long, like long arms, long legs, lanky shadow figure. And it kind of just like threw itself into the room. And then I was sitting in a chair across from it. I was sitting in a chair and I, uh, I think I asked like, what do I need to do to move forward on my spiritual path or something like that? And then in like booming like booming in a booming sound <laughs> i heard focus but like in my ears and in my mind and it scared me and i like snapped out of it and i like opened my eyes and then i was like out of the meditation and i was like what the f like i didn't think that was real i was like whoa it was like focus or i think it said focus i really don't remember. i think it said focus i don't really remember the shit was creepy though <laughs> um but if you guys want to do that i think it was a guided meditation by the honest guys um, I'm not too sure though, but maybe it might have been because I, I used to listen to the honest guys a lot um, on YouTube and Yeah, so anyways, so meditation um, What else can we do for you spiritually? Maybe pray if you're into that stuff praying Japa meditation Japa meditation is uh, Chanting on beads if you have meditation beads um, to start off. I think there's some that I have 56 or something like that Um but I usually go for the old, old traditional 108, the 108 names of God. Um, so I wear Rudraksha. Usually Rudraksha are worn by Shaivites or those um, devoted to Shiva, which he's, he's kind of like, that's why it's called Rudraksha. Rudra is another name for Shiva. Um, it's said that when he, I think, I don't really remember the exact story, but... I think when something something happened on earth and he cried like because he's not from earth he's not on earth he's like in a different dimension basically um and he he cried and when his tears hit earth they turned into rudraksha seeds so these are very sacred holy seeds um you can find many fake ones uh everywhere and probably like those spiritual stores that you get like a bunch of like crystals and stuff um i would check where they're sourced from um and i would also kind of look at them i don't know uh, a lot of them could be fake i get mines from india i don't go to india personally but i know people who go to india personally and i get them from india um so japa meditation chanting on beads this is a form of meditation this is a form of spiritual practice uh meditation japa meditation praying um reading reading into spiritual books and and doing your your learning and research that's also spiritual practice um what else asana yoga physical asanas um yoga postures this is a this is a form of spiritual well whatever you feel is spiritual is freaking spiritual guys if you go for a walk that's spiritual if you plant a tree that's spiritual i think everything's pretty spiritual if, unless if you do it in devotion to spirituality i absolutely believe it to be be spiritual so you could put whatever you want on the list drawing or whatever writing letters to god um whatever works for you so anyways getting right into this episode today uh we are going to be talking about dun 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 another controversial topic um is it controversial though i i don't really know we're gonna be talking about gender fluidity um and non-binary um what was the other to topic hold on let me look at my look at my list uh Cultural appropriation. Ooh, I could I could touch that for a little bit. Um, and in, and inclusive language. Okay, so <clears throat> inclusive language. Um, I guess you can fit that in with a uh, gender fluidity. I guess I could go for cultural appropriation too. Um, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, 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 yeah. It can, it can. Like uh, the N word and stuff. Okay, so let's just get right into it. But first, uh, first and foremost. Um, I pulled a card for you guys, but before I talk about the card, uh, a word from our sponsors. Okay, so, welcome back, guys. Uh, we are gonna read this card. So, I pulled from the Universe Has Your Back Deck 
by Gabrielle Bernstein. Um, and it is kind of an affirmation deck, but it always gives us a message. So the affirmation and message for this week, guys, is the moment I embrace my peace within and surrender the outcome is the moment that the universe can truly get to work. The moment I embrace my peace within, the moment I embrace my peace within and surrender, the outcome is the, okay, wait, <laughs> I'm reading this all awkward. The moment I embrace my peace within and surrender the outcome is the moment that the universe can truly get to work. Okay, so the, the universe can only get to work if you embrace your peace within and surrender the outcome. Now, I absolutely, I absolutely agree with this because, okay, when it, going back to where it says surrender the outcome, when I surrender the outcome, this is you giving up control, basically. If you're too busy trying to control the situation, how do you expect the universe to truly get to work to do anything for you to let it happen the way it's meant to happen if you're too busy trying to control every single aspect of it of course you want to control an aspect of it like it's i can't i'm not going to think of an example right now but whatever situation you may be in you want to give it some direction right so you're gonna put in you're gonna put in that effort to put it in the direction that you'd like but there's only so much you can do for that situation without you know, let, just let it go, you know, just, and then, <laughs> then the universe can get to work, like, you, you can, if you really want to surrender something or a situation to the universe, stop trying to control every single aspect, that's what I was trying to say, um, and the moment I embrace my peace within, the moment I embrace my peace within, the moment you embrace the situation the way it is, that everything just is, and surrender the outcome, then the universe will get to work. So that is our affirmation for the week, for the day. Um, and until the next time we speak. So getting into the subject. Um, first, if I've attracted uh, anybody to this episode um, who may be non-binary, uh, gender fluid, um, just in the LGBT community, um, and you uh, take offense. Very, I'm not gonna. I'm not here to offend you or anything. But like, nobody, nobody intends to offend anybody unless it's you know on purpose. Um, and if you've become offended very easily, um, don't listen to this. Okay. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying anything offen offensive. So maybe I don't know. Maybe you can listen to it. I don't know. And then you get offended. But a little, a little uh, blurb about uh, offense, right? You can only take offense to what you take. Per, like what you identify with and not only that what you identify with but like sorry haku is like all over and she has like a little cone on her head um so she's gonna be all over here i don't know what she's trying to do um but offense okay so you can't really take offense to something unless Unless you allow it. Like, it's nothing is ever offensive. It's only you that gets offended. That's what, that is what I was trying to say. So, like, say, like, oh, you're ugly. Like, that's offensive. But it's only offensive if you take a offend, offense to it? Offense to it. Um, if you let it get to you, you could be like, ha, 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 yeah, I'm ugly. Then it's, is it offensive? I, I mean, okay, maybe ugly is a bad example. But. Okay, say, like, if you tell someone, you need to clean your room, like, that's just, on that person's end who said that, they're probably just trying to help them, like, oh, you, you know, you're, you need to clean your room, and they're not thinking they're being offensive, but the person whose room it is might take it as an offensive comment, like, oh, you're trying to say I'm dirty, or, like, don't tell me what to do kind of thing, ah. um, so they might... They might take offense to it, but that didn't mean that the original intent was offensive. So, um, if you're ever offended by anything, and this goes for anything, I'm not even talking about, you know, uh, non-binary or anything like that. Um, but if you take offense to anything, ask yourself why you are offended. Why are you offended? Is it hurting your ego? Is it hurting your ego? Ego gets offended. And 
We are huge advocates in this podcast to eradicate that ego and move into a higher state of consciousness and um, try not to take offense to stuff and look at things from a higher perspective. So anyways, um, if you take offense to the and then this is kind of why I wanted to talk about this topic because there's so much sensitivity in the world right now and that's really what I want to talk about with cultural appropriation and the LGBT community and just how much I'm seeing so many people get offended for no reason um and i've seen this firsthand like reading comments or you know watching videos and debates of like topics like this um where people are just so touchy right now and i'm not talking about a specific topic but i'm talking about all of these topics a lot of these i guess you could say touchy topics um but i don't think that they're touchy topics at all unless we make them touchy topics and a lot of people, and I don't know why everybody's kind of hypersensitive right now. Um, I personally feel like it's too much estrogen in our food. Um, it's just like, it is in our food. It's super in our foods, like extra in our foods. Estrogen is in your meat. If, you, if you're if you a meat eater, a majority of America eats meat. Um, and this is an American thing. It might be something in Europe too. Um, but it's not like... It's not like a worldwide thing. It's very much an American thing. And I think it's maybe because we're more open-minded, I guess. I don't know. But I, it's a very, we're, it's very, it's very touchy right now. I'm very sensitive and people are getting too offended and people care too much about things that don't really matter. And that's really what I wanted to talk about today. So not really about uh, non-binary, gender fluid, cultural appropriation, but more on how, and uh, you know, focusing on those topics, how we can learn to not be so offended, why we're offended, and why we're also sensitive, and you know, to bring ourselves to greater understanding. Now, first, we, we can start off with um, gender fluidity and non-binary and just the lgbt community um now why i'm saying gender fluid and non-binary is i'm talking about those who identify now gender fluid actually yeah gender fluid could be the same non but yeah okay so those who um i i, I self-educated yesterday guys i honestly did not know um too much about what i didn't know the I didn't, I didn't know the difference between non-binary and gender fluid, okay? There is a difference. Um, I thought they were the same thing. But this is why self-education is a thing, guys. Um, especially for, you know, we have... I'm a, I'm a people person. And I'm not saying, like, I'm a people person, like, oh, I love to socialize. But I intend to um, advocate, advocate for people for the rest of my life. Um, talk to people, interact. And, you know, I need, to, I need to know about these things. Especially with highly sensitive people in the LGBT community. Um about their their pronouns so those who identify as the, and you may all see it in like people's instagram bios it was like she her he him okay first of all like i don't know why but i mean i guess it's in consideration like girls who put she her in their bio i mean it's kind of a given now i mean it may not be for those who are in the lgbt community like oh maybe she has different pronouns but i feel like if you if you have they them pronouns then you would put them in your bio like if you don't have they them pronouns then you could just assume that but then again you know you don't want to make assumptions i guess but i feel like i don't know me personally like if you don't tell me that your pronouns are they, them, and you're, like, if you are, if you look like, <laughs> I feel like I have to be very inclusive in my language. Um, if you look like a female, a female, a woman, like a woman person who is born with female body parts and looks like a female, doesn't dress as masculine or anything like that, then I'm going to assume you are she, her, if you don't tell me that you have they them pronouns like that's just what i'm gonna assume but if you say like oh my my pronouns are she her like i'm just gonna look at you like okay you didn't need to tell me that because i would have guessed that anyways unless you told me you were they them so i don't know that's just a personal thing but that's not that's not even what i'm talking about so anyways um so non-binary okay so but let's start with gender fluid first gender fluid means that you don't um like you're not 
you're kind of just everywhere on the spectrum. So look at gender as a spectrum, right? You have f female on one end and male on the other end, and then there's kind of like a middle point, right? So gender fluid means you kind of just move around the spectrum. So one day, you know, you're you're more guyish, or the other day you're more femaleish, or whatever, and you kind of just move around and you do whatever you want. I kind of like this idea. Um, I'm not I'm not against anything of, any of this at all. I, I'm not, and we're gonna talk about this in a spiritual perspective on why this is or how how this is accepted and all of that for those of you who be like it's not natural or anything like that um so um yeah so that's what that's what uh gender fluid is you kind of just move around it's fluid um non-binary means that you are on the spectrum but you're like you're you're kind of i think well this is what i've heard from a video um i'm not saying from personal experience somebody on youtube who identifies as gender fluid and both non-binary, because you can identify as both, um, is uh, just someone who's like pinpointed on the spectrum, but doesn't conform to either male or female, but it's somewhere on the spectrum, right? So it might be more female, but still have masculine aspects, but not identify as either or, and identify as they, them, right? So they, them are pronouns used to anybody who doesn't want to be considered a female or considered a male. Now, getting into, okay, what is this? Why is this even happening? What is this? And this is, this is like, this is coming from a spiritual perspective. Now, I have always been um, confused about gender fluidity and non-binary and just being gay in general um, in a spiritual aspect. I was never confused, like, in person, like, oh, how could people be gay? Like, I, I never felt like that ever. I've had a gay cousin since I was little like well he was already gay and i was born and then like it was already accepted because my mom like my mom doesn't care like she's very open very artistic like she, we have a gay cousin like, whatever i have many gay cousins actually but i mean i'm not saying that because like oh it's like i have gay cousins i accept gay people i'm saying that since i was born and raised with having gay cousins like i already accepted it like it's not like i had to get used to it or you know like be like oh like oh i, I don't know whatever but anyway, so I've always been okay with it. But when I started to come more into my spiritual, um, on my spiritual path, you know, I, I want to look at everything in a spiritual perspective. So then when I'm hearing about, you know, um, trans people, um, I think trans is a different, I, I, I didn't really look too much into trans, but I think trans is, trans is if you're one gender and then you you dress as the other gender. I think that's what trans is. So like if you're a girl and then you know, you have he, he, his pronouns or something, and then you just as a guy and you identify as a guy, but you are a girl. I think that's trans. Um, but then I think it could be like other stuff too. I don't really know. I don't really know. Um, it's a very wide spectrum. That's what I was learning yesterday is that this whole LGBT thing, like there are things for everything now. That's something, wait, before I even get into that, before I even get into that, um, so anyways, I, I'm becoming like aware spiritually, I was trying to understand how, why is this a thing? Like, how is this a thing in a spiritual sense? Like, of course, in a social sense, I can understand, um, in an evolutionary thing, I can understand, but in a spiritual sense, why is it, originally it was, why are people gay? Um, and then when I started learning more about, um, you know, non-binary people, it's like, how, how is it that? Or not even non-binary people, but trans people, I guess. Um, how is it that some, like, a girl, like, somebody is born a girl, like, female, body-wise, but then mentally they feel like they're a guy. And I saw this in, like, little kids. I think I watched, like, years ago when I was younger. Like, documentaries or, like, small documentaries of little kids being born, like, little girls being born thinking that they're boys or little boys thinking that they're girls. Um, naturally. It's not even, like, the, the parent, um, the parent, you know, in it enforces not enforces it but you know um cheers it on or whatever I mean, whatever the word is for that um to make them do it or like introduce them to it for them to to act like that or to feel like that um so i was always curious i was like okay it has to be something that happens like at birth or before birth like it's something that's already it's already there like it's not like it's something that, in, in many cases, it is something that comes along, like, later in the years, and it could be experienced. A lot of it's trauma. A lot of people who become gay 
um, or trans or anything like that is because of trauma. I'm not saying everybody, of course, but there are some people, um, a lot of people that uh, become like that because of trauma. So that's what I thought. Originally, I was like, oh, it's probably just trauma. But like, of course, that's me young, not understanding a lot of stuff, not knowing a lot of stuff, not learning about a lot of stuff. Um, but now, especially now, which is very interesting, um, I'm coming into more awareness and I completely understand it now because I am in, I guess I'm in the, in the point of my life that I can understand it now. So, what what was I saying that I was gonna get back to? Oh yeah, there's so many there's so many um, different titles for people. There are people like there's titles for okay somebody who's not a uh, she or a he but likes men, and then there's a she or a he but likes women, and then there's those who like women but don't like sexually like women but romantically like men, and there's like all these like different like combinations, and there's a title for every single one, and these are important to people now this is why people are so sensitive like especially like oh if you don't get like the pronouns right or if you don't get the identifier right um or like the type that you're right but i'm not saying everybody's like this but there are a lot of people who are very touchy about this and why is this what are these and why is this well these are identifiers now this is something that we do naturally as humans okay we identify things and we come to conclusions about them and this is how we experience our reality so this is just something that happens in the the physical realm this is how we function right so we create these labels so that we can understand them so um let's say like okay you're a baby you know your parents show you look oh truck color red um car house and then you know we're learning about these things they're showing us them and we're identifying them with these names right so house car and then every time we see a car we're like oh that's a car oh that's a house um and these are just natural things so like even now when you look at a house you know it's a house because of your past memories and what you learn that this is a house it's like from birth you were you were told that that is a house so that is what you see as a house but if you never knew what a house was if you never were told what a house was and identified a house as the word house or had any past memories of houses you're gonna look at a house and be like what the hell is that thing right so this is how we function this is how we communicate this is how we learn right we identify things and we label things so it's very normal, of course, for people to want to have an identifier for how they're feeling romantically or sexually or gender-wise, right? Um, so that's why there's so many different names. But when the, pro the problem comes in, when we become so attached to these labels that we allow it to affect our relationships um you know be have that become offended you know um become very sensitive um and what i want to get down sorry i hate <laughs> i hate yelling at her during the podcast but she knows damn well she's not supposed to be on my altar and she was about to knock something off of it i saw her like smacking it off <laughs> and it would have made a loud noise and i'm just i'm not having it Hi, Haku. What, you're coming up here to apologize? Um, so, where my problem is with this is that this is absolutely ego, okay? Ego wants an identity. Ego wants to identify things, wants you to attach yourself to these identities. Now, I'm not saying not to, you know, identify as non-binary, gender fluid, or whatever it is that you identify by. But what I'm saying is, do not become so attached to these identifiers or whatever it is that you identify as um and let it rule your life and become so attached to them that if you know somebody calls you by the wrong pronoun or the wrong identifier or whatever it is that you become offended because you're so attached to what a word that's literally what it is just because they say the word wrong or you know they don't really understand it because a lot of people a lot of people are still becoming accustomed to this gender fluidity stuff the lgbt community um it's becoming more widespread that a lot of people are against it and then of course a lot of people are for it but there are people who just merely don't understand and they don't want to take the time out to understand 
and that's their own personal problem you don't need to get offended or upset about somebody's lack of education or lack of self-education or somebody who just takes no into consideration of how you feel about your reality because it is your reality how you decide to react towards other people and their reality that's your problem and you need to sit down and think about why you are reacting in this way why you feel this way it's because your ego is hurt your ego wants to be known as this person and you know and this could be a lot because and like not saying for every case but in a trauma sense this could be a trigger for people um with traumas so if maybe you react in a certain way it's because of a certain trauma that you have i'm not saying this is for all case but that is absolutely a valid case um so working through those traumas if you if you react in a certain way if you get triggered in a certain way that is where your work needs to be done this is the universe this is god telling you showing you where your work needs to be done if you are feeling unhappy and reactive towards something and it's just it's kind of like an anger or something that is a trigger and that is the universe triggering you letting you know work needs to be done here you need to release something here you need to work on something here so i feel like with this hypersensitivity and all of that it's very ego driven and a lot of people don't really understand ego especially if you're not on the spiritual journey if you don't really you know ego what i've always understood as ego is like oh he has a big ego like he's so full of himself i always saw as um ego being you know somebody who's full of themselves somebody who is just all about themselves and that is absolutely not the case ego is something that Ah, ego, ego. How do I define ego? Ego is something that is is not. It's not uh, a tool. It, well, okay, you could use it as a tool. It's so hard to explain. It's kind of like it's not what your. It's not your higher self. I guess you can say. So, your higher self, for example, the only thing you can do is try to describe it. Your higher self. Um, is love driven acceptance compassion um friendliness giving love love right um and then ego would be lust anger sadness um kind of everything on that spectrum vanity greed um all of that all of that all of that right so i feel like this hypersensitivity is very ego driven because it wants to keep you ego is very also physical realm we wouldn't have the ego like if we weren't in the physical realm i guess you can say right so in this physical realm this is we have we have maya right shiva had put this maya is it shiva is it vishnu's maya maya who knows it's the it's brahman's maya it's brahman's maya right um it's the illusion right it's the illusion that we are separate from oneness that we are in a constant state of duality that's what the maya is right the yin yang the black and the white the this and the that it's it's a du it's a duality and that's what this re reality is now there's higher self and then there's ego without the ego we wouldn't be in this physical realm so ego keeps us to this physical realm keeps us from these higher perspectives keeps us grounded now on the spiritual path of course we're trying to eradicate ego but ego is actually a tool and you can't actually completely get rid of it um so that that was just like a quick thing of ego so i feel like just on that topic i feel like we need to become more aware of our triggers um, especially those who get triggered by that stuff, um, ask yourself why you're being triggered and is it your ego, right? So getting a little into, um, the, the gender fluidity thing, which I think is really cool. And I found this out. There's something called two spirit. And this is something that, that, that sometimes, you know, LGBTQ, there's a two at the end. This is for two spirit and two spirit is actually, um, a reference name to, in indigenous nations and in indigenous cultures where in certain tribes or maybe in all tribes i don't really know um but in a lot of indigenous tribes there were certain people called two-spirit which were kind of like gender fluid people non-binary people um where it's 
both female and male and they hold both these female and male energies and they were actually held in high regard they were seen as sacred and divine they were shamans they were put on frontline warriors so getting into that now this now what i've come to the conclusion and it's very interesting because even my teachers uh main theme of i don't know if the month or the week is i balance both male and female energies within me and this is what is known as adi shakti right being the yin and yang itself both having both female energy and masculine energy now this i feel maybe maybe it could be maybe I, originally i thought it was maybe a very social thing right everybody's becoming very gender fluid everybody's becoming very non-binary it's very much a trending thing at the moment everybody is coming out as it now maybe because they're aware of it now but i felt like it's a very i felt like it was a very social um enforced kind of thing like oh you know other people are seeing people do it so then they're doing it too right um but it could be us moving to higher consciousness with the um moving more out of duality and moving more into oneness and balancing both energies within us right so moving back all of us individually all things all living things we host both female and masculine energy this is duality this is the unity this is the way the reality works right this is told in many many traditions um many cultures many spiritual practices right eastern um i wouldn't really say western um but in Taoism, we speak of this. Uh, in Chinese medicine, we speak of this. In Hinduism, we speak of this. Um, so just to give it, we, there is that duality topic, right? So in each of us, we hold both energies. Now, a lot of us hold one energy. A lot of us have more masculine energy. A lot of us have more feminine energy. Um, and even it goes down to the foods. Our foods have certain foods have more masculine energy some foods have more feminine energy and this is just the way things are so with people balancing that energy within them this is them hosting accepting both energies within them and i feel like if we were told from the beginning of humanity like going back way back way back years right if we weren't told that Okay, so I guess, you know, genders, genders came into fruition by, okay, hunting-wise, right? The men were probably just more physically built, um, stronger, faster, just born that way, right? It's not like they worked out or anything crazy like that. They were just more suitable for hunting. So the men hunted. And when the men hunted, then the women, the women gave life. The men couldn't give life, so a lot of women were giving birth, right? So they would have to rest. Um, they would cook. They would probably clean. Or I'm, I'm trying to think of cavemen thing. I don't know what cave people did. Maybe the women hunted too. I'm sure they hunted too. Um, but moving more forward towards present time, um, I guess since that was a thing, maybe like men hunted more and then the women gave birth, it kept engraving the idea that men did this and women did that, right? So then it kind of like continued with like fashion and stuff like guys wear this and girls wear that guys act like this girls act like that and the more time goes by the more it engraves in our head the more it engraves in our society the more it engraves in humanity right guys do this and girls do that but if we kind of drew the line earlier back, I feel like everybody would probably be androgynous or everybody would be non-binary and gender fluid and it wouldn't even be a topic and we wouldn't even have these identifiers as I am this and I am that. It would just be everybody is just like kind of a mix of both and then like guys are, women can now get physically as strong as guys and etc. right? So I feel like that could also really be a big part of it. Um, it was the way we were brought up as humans. Um, but I feel like maybe we are moving out of that. Um, now, what? Another, t just the, another thing is, um, just to like leave off on that and kind of move on to the next one, um, is inclusive language. Now, I don't have a problem with inclusive language. Um, but again, the problem comes in where we start to become offended and we become so identified with these labels that it offends us or it attacks our ego and that's where the work needs to be done where we need to realize that 
we are not the ego. We are not the physical body. That's, that's the main thing. We are not the physical body. If you're so worried about what you're identified as, what you're I- identi- identified as, as, <laughs> what you're identified as in this physical realm, um, and you're on the spiritual path, you need to take a step back and realize you are not the body. You are not this physical body. You are soul or spirit or whatever the conscious is within and that is eternal you have lived many lives as men you have lived many lives as women supposedly supposedly by many of these teachings right um i i I can't say from experience even though i feel like um i actually remembered one of my past lives um but that's a different topic um so it, it doesn't really matter And that's what we need to realize. And this is how we become less offended about things. Is that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It really does. And if you feel like, well, it does matter. Then, okay, knock yourself out, all right? Well, just, just, it does matter to you. And that's fine. But just realize that that will always hold you back from reaching your highest spiritual potential. Because you are so attached to an identifying label um, that it's stopping your growth. And that's like me, like like uh identifying as spanish or hispanic or whatever you want to call it latina latin x all right so that's like me somebody's trying to tell you like no like tell me like no you're black or no you're white and then like they keep trying to tell you like like what is wrong with you why do you think you're has like hispanic or why do you think you're spanish um you don't even look spanish you're like all of a sudden I'm like i am spanish i am spanish and it's like detrimenting my entire life because i'm trying to convince myself like or convince them like what what is the energy like is it worth it like do you really want to do that i don't know i just don't think i don't think it's it's good for the spiritual spiritual uh health i don't know what the heck that was um the spiritual health um Oh, also, another thing that I wanted to mention is that Arjuna, Arjuna, if you know the Bhagavad Gita, right? The Bhagavad Gita is one of the holiest texts, spiritual texts in Hinduism, um, especially uh, Vedic philosophy. Um, and the story is Krishna. So Krishna is supreme godhead, right? Is is God, basically. Um, and then Arjuna, Arjuna is about to go into battle against everybody he's ever loved, his family, his friends, all about, he's about to go to war against them, right? And Krishna, Krishna is his charioteer riding him into, riding him into war, but he's talking to him and blessing him with, uh, the knowledge of yoga and the knowledge of, uh, Vedanta, I guess you can say, um, and in the Bhagavad Gita, no, it's not even in the Bhagavad Gita, I think it's, uh, the Mahabharata? I think that's what it is. Mahabharata. Um, it's either the Bhagavad Gita or the Mahabharata. That Arjuna, it says that Arjuna was sexually attracted to Krishna. Now, I think it says that Arjuna is a guy in, in the... Because uh, it says... Well, I, I'm pretty sure they didn't have they them pronouns when they wrote the Bhagavad Gita. But... Um, I mean, Krishna's a guy, I guess, but Krishna, I mean, you can't really say Krishna's a guy, Krishna's God, but Arjuna's a guy, but I guess he, pre- Krishna presents himself as a guy, I don't know, um, so, he is sexually attracted to Krishna, now, he's sexually attracted to Krishna, well, because Krishna is God, right, you are everything towards God, especially Arjuna is a complete devotee, right, if you are devoted to God, God is everything, God is both female, male, they, them, uh, everything a chair it like anything that you want to call anything that is god so of course arjuna is going to be sexually attracted to krishna because he is everything and you are everything towards god so everyone everyone is god since god is everything god is everyone so it is natural for us to be sexually attracted towards anything or towards everything and you know maybe naturally you know guys are attracted to girls and this is for procreation reasons right the main reason why you know female i don't know pheromones and uh testosterone um they they match like that with male and female body parts is for procreation and so it's very natural for a guy to be attracted to a female and female to be attracted to a guy but 
now that we are moving from the body because we're very we're very root chakra very physical sense right and we're moving up and becoming more aware spiritually and aware of our spiritual sense and just kind of more aware of everything we become more sexually attracted to everything because everything is god so it's i i believe it's absolutely natural for us to be gay to be trans to just be everywhere because well, okay. Well, gay-wise, I feel like, okay, so gay, I think is absolutely natural because, you know, you're sexual towards everything. You're sexual towards God. God is everything, right? You are everything towards God. Um, but when it comes with having both both energies within us, I absolutely believe that that's the Adi adi shakti that is people coming more into terms with the energy that is within them instead of conforming to what they feel because i feel like a lot of males you know they have these female aspects but they don't want to you know because they're very male and you know uh masculine stuff or whatever they don't want to be seen as weak or anything but this is very social constructed stuff there's very things that you know you don't want to be seen as this and that or whatever and you care what people think um but I feel like a lot of males have a lot of female aspects that they don't want to show. But if they embrace them more, maybe they would like, maybe they would like embracing female stuff. And the same thing goes for females. Like, my sister, she, well, she's my stepsister, but she's my sister. Um, she was a tomboy for, she was super tomboy when I met her. Like, I met her when I was in third grade, maybe. We were very young. Um, but she was very tomboy-like, like, very tomboy-like, and I had never met anybody like that. I was very girly girl. We were two ends of the spectrum, right? She was very tomboy, and I was very girly girl, but I was never introduced to tomboy or anything like that, so when I saw her, I became very interested, like, whoa, she's, like, you know, uh, embodying male aspects, like, I thought that was super cool, and then immediately I started going into this tomboy phase where I wanted to have boy-like qualities, because I didn't know it was a thing that I could do, you know, I was told, I was shown that, oh, girls like this, girls like that blah, blah blah girls wear skirts dresses pinks all that and seeing that that doesn't have to be the case made me embrace it in myself so i think that this is very much this is very important i think it's very important that um we become more open with ourselves and stop caring what people think and i think that maybe that's why a lot of people are becoming gender fluid and non-binary because we're becoming more accepting of ourselves and not really caring what other people think so, um, we're, we're, we're hitting close to the hour, um, but I just want to talk about, <laughs> I just wanted to talk about, um, I want to talk about cultural appropriation, guys. Now, I'm not going to really get into this, but cultural appropriation, we need to realize that this is an American issue, okay? This is an American problem, and this goes along with the hypersensitivity and all of this stuff, right? Cultural appropriation. What is cultural appropriation? Cultural appropriation, I'm not going to define it um, from a book or anything, but what it is is that someone is... Uh, dressing or taking uh, a certain culture or aspect of a culture um from a certain culture <laughs> is taking an aspect from a certain culture and wearing it or using it as their own when they're not part of that culture um without you know giving credit to that culture or you know knowing too much about that culture so for example this is uh people wearing headdresses uh i mean i don't know People wearing headdresses for Halloween or girls wearing bindis at festivals, right? So this is what people consider as cultural appropriation. Or people wearing kimonos. People wearing kimonos, right? Um, so what I would like to say is that, okay, I feel like there are aspects to this, um, but it's... <sighs> It's mostly hypersensitivity, guys. This is, and I, when I say this is an American thing, it's because a lot of people who say, oh, you're cultural appropriating, or like all of that talk is done in America. And mostly it's from people who aren't even of that culture. So it's kind of annoying to hear and to see people point out cultural appropriation when they're not even from that culture and they're trying to speak for that culture so like somebody's wearing a kimono and people are saying oh you're cultural appropriating all oh, your culture appropriating when japanese people where kimono comes from they don't they don't care what they care about is if you're wearing it properly what they feel as 
it's as if you're you're honoring their tradition as you're spreading japanese culture and tradition and they're happy about it if you ask anybody in japan how do you feel about foreigners wearing kimono well most people because a lot of people you know may feel different but most people that you ask is they feel like they are expressing japanese culture and that you know, they really like that. They want people to know about their culture. Where the problem comes in, where they feel is that if they're wearing it improperly or wearing it wrong, in which they would correct and be like, oh, this is how you wear it. You know, this is what it means or whatever. But they feel like as if you're honoring their tradition. The same thing goes for, what else? Um, I don't really know too many things that people call it. Okay, bindi's at festivals. Now, I don't know about, I've seen a video about the Japanese and the kimono. Um, I think Bindi's, I think I saw a video on that too, where they asked people, how do you feel about um, Indian people, wear, uh, foreigners wearing bindi's, I guess. Um, and I feel like most of them, so most of them, there was another thing um, about geishas and stuff. I saw, I, I saw a lot of cases where a lot of people who are calling out the cultural appropriation aren't even from that culture. And then people from that culture would respond and say, I don't know why people are saying this is cultural appropriation. I think it's beautiful. I think that, you know, it's honoring our tradition and et cetera, et cetera. And I hear this in so many different circumstances and cases that the culture itself actually doesn't feel offended or doesn't take offense to it. And they see it as them honoring the tradition or, you know, spreading the wisdom of that. Now, I personally... Um, I personally wear bindi. I personally wear tilak. And this is for spiritual reasons, of course. Um, I'm not wearing it for fashion, even though a lot of um, Indian people do wear it for fashion and don't really know the spiritual sense of it because that's, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of, and it's not even Indian people because it's, it's Hindu people. Um, but even though I think maybe Indian people wear it, I'm not too sure. Um, Hindu people are Indian people uh, most of the time. Um, but there are Indians that are Muslim, so that's why I'm saying Hindu people. Um, so, anyways, with that case, um, I'm okay because it's a, a lot of people like, okay, I've met, I've met a girl who's born in India and I met her, I was wearing tilak, okay, I, I wear bindi and tilak, depending on the mood and depending on the day, um, but they're both my, 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 my symbol to God, um, and an Indian girl who's born in India, um, from India, all of that, right? She comes into my job. This is my old job, restaurant job, and I'm, I'm here in the front counter, like, hi, welcome. And I have this giant tea lock on my forehead, and she, she was standing there looking at the menu, and then she keeps looking at me, and then, she, and I could tell she's Indian too, and I could tell that she was Hindu, um, or had some kind of Hindu heritage, right? So she looks at me and she's like, why are you wearing that? And then I told her, I explained to her that this is my, my symbol to God. This is my dedication to my spiritual practice, to Brahman, right? And she absolutely loved it. She was completely, like, ecstatic. Like, oh my gosh, I love that you're wearing that, you know? Um, I'm coming more into terms with my Hindu roots myself. And then we started talking about Hinduism and her life in India and how her spiritual journey is and all of that. So... A lot of people, if you know the reasons why you're wearing it, then I absolutely believe it's okay. If you're wearing it for the same reasons that other people, like, that's absolutely fine. If other people see it as offense, they need to ask themselves why. Like, people who aren't part of the culture, why? Don't automatically come to conclusions. Don't automatically assume somebody's cultural appropriating. Like, you need to understand like okay maybe they're wearing it for the same reason they're wearing it um uh, maybe they're part of that culture who knows like somebody can look at me like oh she's cultural appropriating but how do you not know i'm hindu how do you not know i'm indian right a lot of people are wearing kimono how do you know you're not japanese maybe you have japanese roots maybe you don't look japanese but you have japanese in your family and like it could just be anything like you don't know personally unless you ask if you feel that if it's gonna bother you that much and you need to ask the person why they're wearing something or like if you're not part of the culture obviously um and like need to ask or in inquire then go knock yourself out but it's really not your problem and none of your business now with girls with bindis and festivals i feel like it's decorative a lot of indian girls they wear bindis for decoration and don't even know why they're wearing it um apparent like unfortunately that's sad but 
um a lot it's true a lot of people see it as a decorative item and i feel like at this now like during this time more now than ever that it's they're moving away more from the spiritual roots um it's become more decorative so i feel like girls wearing bindi at um festivals even though it's not even a, a full bindi like i've never seen a girl with just a one bindi in the middle of their forehead at a festival i've never seen that usually i see like a bunch of like jewels on their foreheads kind of in the shape of a bindi or like across their forehead or their eyebrows and it's very decorative i feel like that's very decorative very festive like and that shouldn't be cultural appropriation at all um so i think that that's just what i want to talk about cultural appropriation guys is that people if you are not part of the culture that you are claiming somebody's cultural appropriating just edu- you need to educate yourself ask educate yourself about that culture learn what the meaning is learn what what it is that they're cultural appropriating be it a headdress be it anything um even though a lot of native americans are, are saying that uh headdresses are cultural appropriating for um for halloween i don't think so personally i mean but i'm not uh an uh native american like cherokee or whatever uh you know middle america native americans are um i'm native american when it comes to the caribbean but no not when um not when it comes to like um, like america mainland america um but i have seen a lot of like people who are like oh yeah we're still here my headdress is not your costume so a lot of people take offense to that but i feel like that's also an ego thing i mean i don't see a problem with like oh headdress is for what uh, what to my knowledge i didn't do any research on this whatsoever it's like for a uh, like for a uh, chief right it's like a chief thing or like a princess thing it's like somebody who's of high stature um that's what i think i don't know i really don't know um so i, I wouldn't see that as offensive let me you know let me educate myself real quick um what is a headdress for let's see Clothing, headgear, headwear, headdress is the name given to any element of clothing which is worn on one's head. What? What is the purpose of headdress? What is the purpose of headdress? Made of numerous materials, designs, shapes, and embellishment, headdresses can also serve practical purposes, protecting the head against natural elements, carrying objects. What? Oh, okay. The Native American headdress is a well-known symbol of strength and bravery to the indigenous. Okay, it it cut off. War bonnet. Also cool also called war bonnets or headdresses, are feathered headgear traditionally worn by male leaders of the American Plains, see, uh, American Plains, Indians nations who have earned a place of great respect in their tribe. Originally, they were sometimes worn into battle and they are now prim- primarily used for ceremonial occasions. So I don't really think it's cultural appropriation if you wear it as a costume. I mean, but then again, you know what? If somebody dressed as an Indian or as a Hindu, like with a sari and a bindi for Halloween, I feel like maybe that's a. I don't know. I feel like I I wouldn't do that personally. I mean, I that's I feel like that's like Halloween. Halloween. Halloween is supposed to, you're supposed to dress up like okay. Halloween originally was supposed to dress. You're supposed to dress up as things that aren't human. So that the ghosts would, like, leave you, (laughs) the ghosts would leave you alone, right? So, like, if the ghosts and, like, all these evil creatures would have walked the earth on the day of Halloween and they're looking for humans to, like, eat and stuff, they can't find any humans because you're dressed as, like, an animal or, like, a weird ghoulish thing, right? So I feel like if you dress as another human, um, it's kind of not, but that, uh, Halloween has evolved into something else. Um, I don't know, we all dress, like, slutty people and I (laughs) don't know firefighters and something like that we're still dressing as other humans i don't know but anyways i'm gonna cut off this episode here guys thank you so much for listening um i hope i didn't offend anybody in this subject i was just trying to educate people um i'm still just trying to educate people um and come into come into more respective terms you know how we can understand other people's views and opinions and how our us ourselves can move out of opinions and views and see things from a wider spectrum and not be so attached to these identifiers or to things that just label us we don't need to attach ourselves to them um they will only hold us back from growing right if we attach ourselves to something as little as a label or a title as a name um and we become so attached to it that you know we're trying it's like it's like say that label is a tree right and you tie yourself to that tree 
and you want to keep moving forward, right? You want to keep moving on your journey, but you can't because you're tied to the tree, right? So you can't really go past a certain point um, unless you learn to let go, unless you learn to surrender. So going back to our weekly affirmation, the moment I embrace my peace within and surrender the outcome is the moment that the universe can truly get to work. We can truly move on to our paths, become our higher selves if we learn to embrace our peace within and surrender the outcome. So that is it for this week, guys. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for supporting me. If you want to check out some more episodes, go check them out. Um, and my Instagram is Natalia of Earth. If you want to rant to me or um, just say anything, ask me questions or anything like that. Um, it's Natalia of Earth. N-A-T-A-L-I-A of Earth. This planet Earth. I have a blog. I'm a writer. Um, it's the writings of Natalia.wordpress.com. But you can find all my links on my Instagram bio. Um, if you don't have Instagram, then just go on the writings of Natalia.wordpress.com and you will find all my links there too. I have many ebooks, um, poetry collections, photography collections, um, and blog posts for you guys to check out. So yeah, thank you again, guys. And I hope you have a wonderful week. I will talk to you next week and I will close this off with a verse from the Tao. Whenever you advise a ruler... In the way of Tao, counsel him not to use force to conquer the universe, for this would only cause resistance. Thorn bushes spring up wherever the army has passed. Lean years follow in the wake of a great war. Just do what needs to be done. Never take advantage of power. Achieve results, but never glory in them. Achieve results, but never boast. Achieve results, but never be proud. Achieve results, because this is the natural way. Achieve results, but not through violence. Force is followed by loss of strength. This is not the way of Tao. That which goes against the Tao comes to an early end. <laughs>